Hi, I'm Dave Carell from New Balance Canada here in Mississauga, Ontario, and introducing one of our guests for the Scotiabank Toronto Waterfront Marathon Speaker Series in partnership with Canada Running Series, Running Room, and New Balance Canada for this segment. And Chris Balestrini from Team New Balance Canada is joining us. Chris is a double major MD PhD student. I just learned that he has finished his PhD. Uh, component in anatomy and cell biology and is currently in his medical school component. Chris currently is in London, Ontario, but during the year lived in Canmore, um, which uh, surrounding peaks go up to 3,000 meters, and I'm sure he saw some of those peaks and, and looked out over the province. Chris is the Canadian 50k road record holder, which was a record set in May of 2021. And he ran two hours, 48 minutes, 32 seconds along the Hamilton Beach for the Canadian 50K record. And just to set that into context, that is about three minutes, 22 seconds per kilometer, or about 222 for a marathon, and still going for another eight plus kilometers. Chris has also run a 29, 22, 10,000 meters on the track and has a marathon personal best of 217.05 from the fastest fun marathon in October. 2020 in Waterloo, Ontario. Um, also, one more fun fact is uh, if you look up Chris Balestrini on Strava, and I recommend check him out to follow, uh, he has logged uh, over 31,000 lifetime kilometers as of Strava recordings. So that's pretty <laughs> impressive. That's a lot of coverage. I don't know if that's circumference around the earth, but it's probably getting close. And uh, Today we're talking about footwear insights. Chris is going to share some of his thoughts on footwear from a New Balance perspective. Um, Chris has very interesting experience as both uh, road and track and cross country and mountain trail running. And our first question is we're going to ask Chris, what does he look for in his shoes and how does he use his shoes for different workouts? Yeah, so thanks for the intro. There's a <laughs> it's a, it'll be hard to live up to that intro. Uh, um, in a shoe, it really depends on on what I'm doing my my runs for for that like which specific purpose I'm doing my runs for. So, on the roads, I look for uh, something that's going to be fairly soft, um, be able to kind of uh, run a lot of miles in and stay kind of injury free. So I'm looking for for a nice light shoe that's that's relatively uh, soft and uh, and feels good miles after miles. So for me, that's um, that's the the 1080 um, on uh, around here. Uh, the 1080 and uh, the Fresh Foam More uh, are my two kind of go tos on on the roads around here. Um, if I'm thinking about for that's for kind of for easy days, and if I'm thinking about workouts or a little bit more faster pace uh, running uh, and some of my long runs, I'll do that in uh, the the TC, the New Balance uh, Fresh Foam TC, uh, which is uh, a carbon plated shoe and um, gives a little bit extra kind of get up and go for those those harder workouts. And, and I find that mentally that can kind of help a little bit. Um, and then for uh, for trails, um, I'm a big fan of the the Moore Trail um, and, and the High Arrow V6 has been, been a great shoe um, for that as well. And then when it comes down to racing, um, my go-to is is the RC Elite uh, version two, um, and the New Balance, and and it's been um, it's the shoe that I kind of um, well, it's the shoe that I set the 50k Canadian record in, and um, it just it feels fast, it looks fast, and it just is fast. So <laughs> it's a, it's a great shoe for that, and and it just yeah it feels awesome on the roads. So it's clear that you wear different shoes for different types of training by the sounds of it. You, you listed, and I, I was writing them down, there's about five or six different options there, which is great, but um, kind of why do you use different shoes? And I know they have different drops and different foams. Some are fresh foam, like the 1080, some are fuel cell, like the TC, but why all the difference in all the different shoes? Um, one of the things that, that I like to do is, is kind of switch up shoes, even if it's just on the roads, you might think that some people have like a, like a one road shoe that they kind of run in. Um, but I think kind of just landing a little bit differently with, uh, with foot strike 
um, just the repetitive motion and the repetitive nature of, of running in general um, kind of puts stresses on your bones and like in similar places if you're always running kind of in the same shoes. So I, I kind of like to to mix up um, a couple different drops and shoes, whether it be like a 10 mil drop shoe or an eight millimeter drop shoe, um, just to kind of switch switch that up. But uh, and sometimes I if I'm going maybe on like a shorter run, I'll use kind of like a little bit kind of a, a stiffer of a, of a foam, let's say. Whereas if it, um, if I'm kind of in the mood for for a little bit recover of recovery, or if my uh, I'm hurting a little bit from the run the day before, then I like to kind of wear a softer shoe, um, kind of absorb a bit of that impact a little bit more. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. And have you always used a variety of different shoes for your career, or has have you found later in your career you're starting to use more shoe options? Yeah. So like for the longest time, I, I would always run just in the, the 1080 um, was kind of my, my go to shoe for everything for road for trails. Um, I do like workouts in them as well. And I think um, kind of as I've as I've, I don't know if it's a, as I've gotten older, as I've gotten more experience, let's say <laughs> um, I've, I've kind of noticed that I stay more I kind of stay more consistent and stay injury free when I do switch up the shoes um, and I don't know if, if that's kind of like uh, a, a function of of putting the, those different stresses on on the the bones and not having that repetitive stress or if it's just kind of um, yeah kind of like a, like a mental thing or, or what's going on there but yeah no I, I switch up the shoes definitely more more frequently than I used to but I, I think it keeps me going interesting. interesting. Definitely over the last four years, as carbon plated footwear has become more of a thing, now it seems like there are more options. And a lot of runners and, and walkers have different, have their kind of just foam shoe for the easy day, and they have a plated shoe of some kind. It might be a carbon plate or a, a TPU or nylon plate for their races or workouts. But I definitely wanted to ask you about that topic because I know uh, at the Scotiabank Toronto Waterfront Marathon in 2019, which was the Canadian Championships and Olympic Trials at the time. Um, I know New Balance had just launched a prototype. So there's only three runners in Canada that had the prototype at the time. You were one of them. And um, certainly some other brands had launched carbon plated shoes in the previous year, and it's become more of a thing. But um, do you kind of feel you need a carbon plated shoe to race in? Um, what's the benefit and is there a reason not to wear a carbon plated shoe? Yeah, I, I definitely think that a, the carbon plated shoe is a, is a, a major benefit to, to racing now. Um, I think carbon plated shoes, but also mixed with like the newer foams uh, that are coming out. Um, like the fuel cell foam is, is, is pretty awesome. But I think the main thing is kind of the combination of, of both of them together. The carbon plate the carbon plate keeps things stiff it keeps it kind of uh keeps keeps like a roll through the the takeoff phase of the of the sh of the run or the stride um and the foam really kind of like like is kind of creates that that squishiness or, or like and then gives you that rebound in the response and that kind of like the interplay between the foam and the carbon plated shoe is definitely beneficial i i can honestly say that uh, I I don't think I'd line up uh, on, at a road race without a carbon plated shoe these days, um, and uh, yeah, it's just um, I think from from the early days of of when the the TC came out and then the first version of the the RC Elite and now the second version of of the RC Elite V2, um, things have gotten like really 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 good and um, it's gotten lighter it's it's gotten feels stiffer. Um, feels like more more rebound so I definitely turn to that for for all my my faster well definitely for my races but um, but in training I, I sometimes I like to train with like the TC because it's it's a little bit heavier of a shoe but still has the same kind of uh, geometry the, the same uh, almost like feel um, but then when you switch into the RC Elite V2 on race day you get that like extra boost as well so <laughs> Right, right. You, you raise an interesting point that you wouldn't maybe line up without a carbon plated shoe these days. And I think that's kind of a consensus, a unanimous decision by most uh, participants that there is performance benefit. If someone is trying to get their personal best, 
or their Boston qualifier or, you know, just trying to run their seasons best that compared to a shoe without a carbon plate, there are mechanical advantages to, to wearing the shoe. So speaking of carbon plates, we were going to look at a few sneak peeks and these are ultra sneak peek for 2022. In fact, some of these shoes next to me, I, I don't think have barely been shown on social media. So the viewers are going to get an early look. There's only been a few posts. Uh, and the first one I wanted to show, uh, and Chris, I'll do a little description. And, and I know you've been running in one and you can tell us what you think of it. But I wanted to show this shoe, which will launch in summer of 2022. It's called the Fuel Cell Super Comp Trainer. And this is a carbon plated shoe that like in the name suggests that it is intended for training. It is above the world athletics regulation stack height. So this is intentionally a rule breaker. It's 47 millimeters in heel height as uh, an eight millimeter drop. And it does have a full length carbon plate heel to toe that's shown in the bottom unit of the shoe. But otherwise the upper fits very much like the 1080. It's just really thick on an eight mil drop and a full length carbon plate with a very soft called an autoclave or p backs fuel cell foam in the midsole. And Chris, I, I know you, you said, in fact, you wore a pair of these tonight um, in your run. So the Super Comp Trainer coming out in 2022, what do you think of this one and what do you use it for? Yeah, so this is, uh, I have to say, this is probably my, my becoming a go-to shoe of mine for sure. I've probably put more miles on it in the last month than any other shoe. Um, it's just so, uh, it's, it's, it's rejuvenating almost when you run, it's like, you can be sore when you start the run and by the end, you're just, you're just flying. Cause, uh, there's, there's so much cushion. It's, it's so comfortable, uh, on the foot, the upper fits like almost like a sock. Um, and you just get a lot of that, um, a lot of cushion, um, but a lot of rebound with that carbon plate as well. Um, and yeah, so anytime I'm I'm beat up, but even even when I'm not, when I just want like a nice ride, um, and I'm running on the roads. Like this has become a definitely a go-to shoe for me. It's it's uh, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, well well said. And for someone who races 50k sometimes, you putting on a lot of mileage on the body, and I know that's always been the intent with this shoe, is that the the runner using it, we want to help them be able to train more stay healthy longer and lower the impact on the body. And you're starting to see more plates get into training shoes, not only in the racing shoes. So this will be at 230 Canadian retail price next summer. Uh, we'll, we'll look at just a, a couple other ones. And um, I did want to show this one, which does not have a carbon plate, but this is the Fresh Foam More version three. And this um, is just a new color, but just for the viewers, this is a four millimeter drop. It's a now a, a 32 millimeter heel height. So it's quite thick. It's very much a maximal shoe. It's, it's taller and thicker than the 1080, but the same Fresh Foam X cushioning with the hexagon compression lateral configuration on the shoe and on the medial side, we call a convex hexagon that sticks out that actually gives a little bit of structure on the medial side. But this shoe, um, we're on version three now, so the shoe has been in market a bit. What do you use the Fresh Foam more for, Chris? Yeah, a, a lot of my easy, a lot of my easy days, um, I alternate like this kind of and the 1080 together. Um, and and again, it's just like a, a mix up of of the different drops. Like the 1080 has a little bit more of a drop. Uh, this has that four millimeter drop, and um, it's definitely just kind of for me. It's um, it's a shoe that I like. I put on and then just can can run like uh, like the name says more it just you can put miles and miles on this shoe um it feels good and um yeah it's it's great for for roads and for mixing up it's definitely in my my uh my heavy rotation with the, the more yeah and it's interesting how light this shoe is because for a mint size nine and a half it is under 10 ounces it's uh like nine and a half ounces so even though these shoes are quite thick and foam, they're a lot lighter than they ever have been before. So it's not a clunky shoe, but it's definitely a max cushion shoe. I think we'll we'll look at two others. One, very, the viewers will enjoy seeing this new sneak peek, but this is coming out in spring of next year. This is called the Super Comp Pacer. 
So that name super comp, you'll start to see in a few different shoes. We saw the trainer earlier, this is called the Pacer. This also has a full length carbon plate and we're starting to see lower profile, lower stack height shoes, not only for the marathon, but for shorter distance racing and workouts, uh, tempo runs, carbon plates are starting to find their way into some of those shoes. And only a few brands have lower stack height carbon plated shoes right now. But this shoe is listed as a 10 millimeter drop. It very much fits like the 1400 did, but it has a carbon plate. Um, the midsole is a fuel cell Aurora autoclave foam. It has a PBAX component. It's actually a two layer autoclave foam. And, and then this shoe will retail for $200 next year. Um, and, and Chris, I know your prototype size. So you often get to try some of the shoes early and, and you reminded me you, you had a pair of these, which I forgot. And have you had the chance to try it or, or not yet? And what would you use the super comp pacer for? Yeah, so this this shoe is like it's awesome. It kind of brings back a lot of. Sometimes people want that uh, that racing flat feel still, and I think that this shoe is like exactly that. It kind of like has a, a racing flat feel, but it has the modern performance benefits that you see in kind of the shoes that have come to market lately. Um, you have like that that stiff carbon plate, obviously, in there. You have the the newer foams. Um, so yeah, I, I'd race kind of like five K's, 10 K's for sure. Maybe even up to like the half marathon in this shoe, um, or some people like a racing flat shoe, they could race marathons, no, no problem. Um, but for me, kind of, I see it as like a, like a five K, 10 K racer and definitely, um, a faster workout shoe. Like if I was work doing workouts on the track, or if I was doing, um, 400, 600 meter repeats, maybe kilometer repeats, like this shoe, uh, would be the, the way to go for sure. Great. Great. So there's more shoes to add to your six already. Uh, <laughs> and we'll, we'll look at one more. And knowing that you did live in Canmore, if people were following Chris Ballastri on Instagram, you would have seen some gorgeous photos of the Rocky Mountains and the trails and climbing. Um, so you definitely put some trail shoes through their paces. This is a look at the Trail More version two, very similar to the road version. It has a four millimeter drop with a Fresh Foam X midsole as a Vibram Mega Grip outsole, very gnarly lugs. If you can see the, uh, it's a six millimeter lug actually. Uh, this shoe retails for 190 Canadian. Um, it is actually made of recycled content in the upper, more than 50% of the upper is recycled material. But this shoe is designed to go far uh, on the rugged terrain. And Chris, I know you tried out some of these in the Rocky Mountains. What did you think of the trail more? Yeah, so I definitely put these shoes through their paces um, out in Canmore, and it honestly is, uh, it's a shoe that I think I'm, one of the shoes I'm most excited about coming to market, because honestly, it is a, it is just a beast in the trails. For any like long day um, out, it's, it's, you have good, like amazing traction, uh, it's responsive, you still have uh, good protection, you have that toe protect in there, um, and it's just it's still it's still supple so the the shoe kind of conforms to um to rocks and and things like that so you can you can get good grip on on them um but you don't necessarily feel them um on your on your foot so it that kind of like prolongs the um kind of like the good sensations of of running um in the trails you don't necessarily feel the rocks but you get the grip on the rocks so it's kind of the best of both worlds um in this shoe and yeah, it was, um, it's the shoe that I, like I was out in camera for six months and I put, um, the most kilometers or miles on, on this shoe out there. It was, uh, it was awesome in the trails. Excellent. Yeah. I, I think what's often in trail running, um, sometimes runners perhaps feel they want to be closer to the ground, but being that this is such a wide diameter platform, that it's still quite a stable base and people, um, are, are stable on the uneven terrain, even though it is a tall stack height. But this is kind of a, a sleeper hit, I think, that once people find it, they really love it, not only for trail running, but sometimes winter running as well. So that's, those are a few sneak Oh, yeah, no, that, that's a big thing, too, is just in the winter, that's a, that's my go-to, like, winter mileage shoe, even um, when it's when it's a little snowy or sometimes if it can be a little icy out, then I'll, I'll, I'll throw on the, the more trail for sure. Yeah. So for those viewers, I was going to say in Ontario, snowy and icy, but uh, consider it almost everywhere in Canada for much of the year. So 
Um, we wanted to show some sneak peeks. Thank you, Chris, for showing uh, and sharing your insights on what you've been wearing sometimes a little bit ahead of market before it comes next spring and summer 2022. And uh, I know you're training for the spring marathon season next year. And we want to both share to all our viewers uh, much success if they're participating this coming weekend in the in-person 10K or anytime this month in the virtual 5K, 10K, half marathon, marathon, hat tricks, multiple distances. Uh, and I want to acknowledge um, Canada Running Series, Scotiabank Toronto Waterfront Marathon, New Balance and Running Room for all the partnership. And we, um, for those of us that will be out uh, cheering for the 10K runners this weekend, we look forward to seeing you there. And, and thanks for listening. And thank you, Chris, for sharing and good luck with your training. Uh, thanks for having me and good luck to everyone out there. Thanks.